Hi everyone, it's Monica and let's talk about some of these new releases that are coming out in October to December 2022 that I'm really excited for. So let's just jump right into my third anticipated reads video this year. I divided the books into their genres, so I have three categories. First one being contemporary, then fantasy, and romance. Starting off with some contemporary books that I don't usually pick up, but I'm excited for these ones. First up is If You Can See the Sun by Anne Liang, and this one releases on October 11th. This is a YA magical realism book, and it's actually a debut, so that's really exciting. And for this one, I was really drawn in by that beautiful cover with all the pretty clouds. In this one, we're following Alice Sun, who is attending an elite international boarding school in Beijing. And Alice feels like she's just invisible in the, a sea of rich and influential teenagers. But then she actually starts to turn truly invisible to people, so that's a bit of an issue. But Alice is on a scholarship, and when she receives news from her parents that they are unable to afford the tuition, even though she's on a scholarship, Alice then decides to monetize her newfound power. Alice advertised that she is willing to be hired for a certain price to discover secrets that her classmates might want to find out about each other, but those tasks from her classmates quickly become really dangerous and Alice is like in a pickle and, and wondering if if this is really worth it. So this one sounds super intriguing and I think it will have some discussion on class differences so I'm really excited for this one. Next on my list is Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. This one is releasing on October 4th and it is an adult dystopian. We are following 12 year old Bert Gardner who is currently living with his father who used to be a linguist but now he shelves books at the Harvard University Library. Although Bert's existence isn't what one might call a really happy life, he knows how to stay quiet, he knows how to keep his head down and not to cause any trouble or draw attention to himself. So if this book is set in America and it's around a decade after the American government decided to have laws written to preserve American culture. The authorities have granted the relocation of children, especially those of Asian origin, and libraries are being forced to remove books that are considered unpatriotic, which includes some of Bird's mother's poultry books, but his mother had disappeared since he was nine years old. Bird himself doesn't really want to know anything about his mother, but he starts to become curious, and when a mysterious letter of a strange drawing appears, for him, it leads him on a quest to find out what has happened to his mother. So I really do feel like this one will make me cry and it will have very powerful messages in it. Going on to my next genre being fantasy, my first fantasy pick is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. This is the second and final book of this uh, Legendborn duology. It's releasing on November 8th. I did mention this one in my September and October TBR. This is definitely a book I cannot wait to read, and although I did not read the first book, I'm still really excited for Bloodmark. So really quickly, Legendborn is about Bree Matthews, who is attending a residential program for gifted high schoolers at a university campus. But on Bree's first night on campus, she witnesses a magical flying demon attack, and she quickly discovers that there is a group of students that have magical powers known as Legendborn, the Legendborn hunts down these demons and Brie might have a connection to them through her dead mother. So Brie's now trying to figure out how she has these magical powers and trying to navigate this secret society and trying not to die from a monster attacks. So this duology really sounds super super good and I cannot wait to finally read it. Next up we have an adult fantasy with magical realism, and this is Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young, and this one is releasing on September 27th. So with Adrian Young, I did want to read and was really interested in her fable duology, The White Fantasy with Pirates, but I have not yet gotten to it, but this new book of hers sounds really interesting too. Spells for Forgetting is described as being lush with magic, secrets, an unsolved murder, and a second chance romance. In this book, we're following Emery Blackwood, whose life has changed one fateful night where her best friend, Lily, was murdered. 
And at the time, her boyfriend, August Salt, is being accused of being Lee's murderer. Now, years later, I think about a decade has passed by now, Emery is now living on Shirsha Island and is a really remote small island and all she wants to do is forget about the past. Currently, she is running her family's tea reading business and this island is known to have a long history of magic and folklore. And Emery just has a gut instinct of something big is going to happen and when overnight all the trees on the island have changed color it turns out that august has now reappeared onto shirsha island after 14 years of being accused of causing that murder no one wants him back in town and he knows that but august is only back in order to bury his mother's ashes however with that august is needing to confront the angry townsfolk in the community that knows that he's back in town and also to repair the one wound that has never healed with emery his ex-girlfriend so what i'm hearing from the description of this book is just a really creepy small atmospheric town on an island and we also get maybe hints of romance and also magic and folklore so i think this one is just a perfect atmospheric read for fall Okay, and my last fantasy pick is The Illuminaries by Susan Denard. It is a YA contemporary fantasy book and is releasing November 8th. I really love the Witchland series by Susan Denard and I did want something a little bit more creepy and fall-like for autumn, so I think this one fits the bill. So what The Illuminaries is about. This book takes place in the town of Hemlock Falls and it's a really small town where you can't really find it on a map and your phone doesn't have signal most of the time. But in Hemlock Falls, there's an ancient order called the Illuminaries that protects the town as well as the rest of humanity from the nightmares and monsters that come out of their forest. And a protagonist, Winnie Wednesday, wants to join this order as a hunter. But ever since her father has been found as a witch and labeled as a traitor and basically shunning her family, it's a little bit tough for Winnie to try to join the Illuminaries. But once she hits her 16th birthday, she is able to go to the hunter trials and have a shot at joining the secret order. And she has the goal in mind to help restore her family name. But in order to train, Winnie does need some help. And who else who help her except the resident bad boy in town. He also happens to be her ex-best friend and his name is Jay Friday. Jay also has really extensive knowledge about the nightmares that are coming out of the hemlock forest and he has more knowledge than anyone should have. With this book, I'm really imagining a really creepy foggy forest around a small town in the remote north and I think it's the perfect setting for this book and I'm ready to be creeped out. <laughs> and switching up gears a little bit onto my romance picks. First up, we have a sequel, and it is It Starts With Us by Carleen Hoover, and this one is releasing on October 18th, and it is the sequel to the book It Ends With Us, which I have right here. This one is telling the story of Atlas and what is going on with him. And personally, I'm ready to cry in this one, and I'm really excited to see where Lily Ryle and Atlas are now after the events of It Ends With Us. This one is definitely really high on my list for fall and I do know some people really don't like Colleen Hoover but I think with It Ends With Us there is a trigger warning here and it might be a major spoilers so if you don't want to listen to this part I think you should skip ahead in like 10 seconds. There is mention of domestic violence in It Ends It With Us, but it is not romanticized. I would not say it is. But I do think that Colleen Hoover did frame this really hard issue in a realistic way. And being in that type of relationship is, of course, not healthy at all. But I think it's just really important that we do have these type of books that address these type of issues. Although personally, I am really excited about this book. I do understand that how some people will won't like Colleen Hoover or want to pick up any of her books but I think you should just read It Ends With Us because it is a really 
sad story but i think an important one to read that's all i say about that but of course i'm open and willing to have any friendly discussion in the comments below if you do want to say something okay and my next romance pick is a holiday themed one and it is called holiday romance by Catherine walsh and it is releasing on october 4th in this one we're following molly and andrew who are trying to make their way back to the united states from ireland but there's a massive snowstorm and all of their flights are cancelled. Molly and Andrew are only friends and for the past 10 years they've had this holiday tradition to just take a plane ride together to Ireland and they catch up and they have some few drinks and they share a laugh or two and then they, I think they would go their separate ways when they're in Ireland from what I'm understanding but they are quite opposites about their feelings about Christmas and the holiday season. Andrew is really into the festive holiday spirit and is really excited to do anything Christmas related while Molly couldn't really care less. But Molly really knows how much Andrew cares to go to Ireland and like reconnect with his background and his culture. But Andrew's family is back in the States in Chicago and Molly's quite determined to help him get back in time for his grandma's traditional dinner. This one sounds definitely like a lighter read and more romance fun filled book and who wouldn't want to fall in love over Christmas? <laughs> so I just added this one because I think a lot of the books on this list are heavy. I did want to have one option on this list that I can just breeze through and I think holiday romance will really be the best book to pick up for when I'm feeling for something lighter. <laughs> Okay, so those were all the books on my most anticipated reads for the rest of this year in 2022. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and maybe got some new ideas of adding some more books to your list. I hope you all had a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring the bell to be notified of my future uploads. I'll see y'all soon.